Keith is the leader of Nexium. He's the philosophical founder. We were told that Keith is a genius with an IQ of 240. He was speaking in full sentences at the age of one, that he was a concert pianist. He was the East Coast judo champion at 11. He earned degrees in mathematics, biology, and physics. Keith is a businessman who created Nexium in 1998. When I first met Vanguard, I was 20, just turned 28, and I was definitely looking forward to meeting him. He was the founder of Nexium, solving the world's biggest problems. He was this selfless humanitarian. I think they said to me, you know, at some point you're going to meet Keith, and I go, when? I go, oh, we'll see, you know. And the way they painted, who's this Keith Ranieri, like who's this Vanguard guy? You know, I was told things like... The Guinness Book of World Records said that he was one of the top scorers on an IQ test ever given. One of the top three problem solvers in the world. He learned French, German, and English before he learned to read. He went to college at RPI, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, when he was 16. Also, they told me he had triple majors in mathematics, biology, and computer science. Keith is... Among many other things, he's a third degree uh, black belt in judo. He was a concert double pianist. He's the biggest humanitarian I've ever met. I've seen him, you know, walk away from money. All of his science is around how does this benefit people. When you're someone like me that values intelligence and you're told this is the smartest man in the world, highest IQ ever scored, you got me. Because of everything I was told and the things he would say, I elevated him in my mind to somebody who really understood the human condition. And then finally, they decide I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was staying at Nancy Salzman's house, and this guy walks in, <laughs> who's like short and like bouncy, and he was like an odd guy. And there was a part of me that was like, Th this is the dude. For breakfast. You can't come to Nancy's house for breakfast. <laughs> but you never know where wisdom comes from, you know? Well, who's to say that this guy, who's just like really strange and interesting, might not be, in fact, like somebody that could actually help the world? So, shall we sit down? Yeah. Or, okay. And so we begin having a conversation. And that conversation lasts for five hours. You all set? Mm -hmm. And in that five hours, I'm asking him about dark matter, quantum mechanics, a whole bunch of things, and he's telling me stuff that's just blowing my mind. And I'm saying to him, I've never heard these ideas before. He goes, well, it's based on a new mathematics that I've developed. And I said, like, you've developed a new mathematics? He goes, yeah. But he was, like, super, super gentle about all these things, you know? And so he starts asking me questions about my life. I think one of the things I've always wanted to do is to um, figure out how to help people to have a greater freedom of thought as opposed to sort of a tyranny of thought. Mm -hmm. The sense I have is that there's something that I'm not quite getting to. Mm -hmm. And he says to me, I think that you feel a deep responsibility for humanity. He says, I think because of your upbringing and what you saw in your country, You want to like do something that's really going to help the world and you're scared that you'll do damage. Is that why you're scared? Is that why you're afraid to hit hard? Because I think it was a thought of doing something and causing more damage. Hmm? And why is this emotional for you? Because I have done that. I think a lot of people have. I've done that, so you find your way. And as the world changes, that way will change. It seems to me like there's a kind of a care and a kind of love that you that you have for people. Yeah, I mean the fact that you recognize something like that in me has, means it's in you. It's almost like he's showing me the movie version of what I could be like. And at that point, he had me. I'm, I'm in awe a lot of you. Why? I don't know. It's 
say something like you exist. You know. It's rare. It's very rare. It's very beautiful. Do you have any other thoughts, questions for me now? Oh my God, I'm sure I do. When I first met Keith, my gut feeling was like, ooh, you know, something's a bit gross. He would kiss you on the lips. That's just kind of what he did. And everyone else did it as well. But at the same time, I had really enjoyed the five day and was very moved and he was the creator of that. And so I need to like let go of that and just see what's right in front of me, which is a guy who's saying he wants to help me. If this guy's created all these things that are helping so many people, like who cares about the kissing on the lips thing? I hear you're a concert pianist. I don't know if I'd say that. I played a very limited number of songs at a pretty high level, at, well, decades ago. Now I'm sort of shabby. His shabby isn't too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad at all. Well, I've had to think about like what I would like to mm -hmm. ask you about. And I'd love it if you could help me get some more support. Mm -hmm. Can I hear your range? Yeah. Just sing with me. Uh, What if you were to sing for three hours in a day? Because uh, you probably will get a difference in about a week. Keith said to me, you know, you could be in Simply Human, the singing group of ESP. I decided to meet Keith Ranieri. I don't even know how to describe what it's like when you, you meet someone like Keith. He understood the human psychodynamic in a way that I have never seen anyone understand it. He understood it and he worked with it. We all want to be in sync with people. We want to feel connected. And that's a feeling that we call rapport. And when we're in rapport with people, we have a tendency to feel an unconscious trust for them. In order to establish rapport, you mirror the other person. Like, if you and I are chatting and you're speaking in a certain volume, I can mirror that volume or match it. You know, let's suppose you have some, someone who's sitting and thinking or whatever. Suddenly, I'm closer and everyone sort of sees it, but the person who's sitting like this will feel more in touch with me like that. You know, and I can we fall up. into a certain rapport when that happens. Keith was a master of that. He told me that he had this idea for a model for behavior change. Go into this organization with four bronze bonuses. Go. And he said, you know, I just thought NLP would be a good basis to do this project that I want to do. He took me into his office and we were drawing charts of perception. And it was the most compelling conversation I've ever had. We talked for five oh, hours. What is the responsibility? Is, is okay. being Humility and vulnerability oh. is fearlessness. If you're completely vulnerable, you have nothing to lose. That makes sense? Yeah. For several weekends in a row, we would have conversations. What do you think is the worst thing someone could call you? A liar. You do? Oh. As if you're getting shit for it. Sometimes I would cry. Sometimes I would laugh. What does materialism bring? Sometimes I would be walking around and I would feel like the ground wasn't steady. Sense of self. Your sense of self. Very quickly. Your sense of self. I realized that the conversations we had had somehow shifted my perspective. And I was far more positive than I was when I met him. Like, far more positive. I had never seen anything like what he did before. 
And I'd never experienced anything like what he did before, myself. If I could help people in that short amount of time, the way that he does, I would do anything.